Do not allow unforgiveness to cheat you out of being called home. Sometimes I wonder, how soon is it going to be? I know some of us just long to see that that whole visual of him busting through the clouds. I want to see that, y'all. I don't know how you feel, but I want to see it. I really, I'm dying to see that. Anyway, pardon the pun. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to Matthew 24. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Lord, you're coming now. (laughs) Therefore be ye also ready. So that's scary to think of all the people that have lived their lives serving God, going to church, paying their tithes, doing this, doing that ministry, feeding the hungry, and don't even make it. Why? These are the things that will keep you on this planet. Sin, willful sin, unrepented sin. But let me point out some that are tricky. These are the tricky sins. We already know sin will keep us down here. Let's point out the tricky sins, and then we'll end this message. Unforgiveness. What does Jesus say about unforgiveness? If you don't forgive those who have committed trespass against you, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. If you refuse to forgive, baby, guess what? As much as you claim to be saved, you better go back to the to the manufacturer and have him do a whole checkup on you and show you what's up. It's better for you to find out now than to find out after he's come and gone. Ask God if there's any unforgiveness in you. And if you cannot, if you cannot find any way, shape, or form, anyway, to forgive what's happened to you and it may have been very severe very brutal ask God to give you the ability and he will so there is no excuse for what we can't do because God's strength is made perfect in our weakness so whatever you're not capable of doing You acknowledge that to God honestly and humbly and ask God to give you the ability. One of the hardest things for me to forgive was the three times I was raped. Date rape. And I told the Lord, I see in your scripture you want us to forgive. But I don't want to forgive them. Matter of fact, This is the way I feel about them. If I found out they died today or tomorrow, I'd dance on their grave. So if it's that important to you for me to do the forgiving, then I ask you to give me the ability because I cannot. I can't forgive them. But if you give me the ability, I will. God gave me the ability. And I did. Every offense you've ever had in your life, God can give you the ability to forgive. Do not allow unforgiveness 
to cheat you out of being called home. You don't want Jesus looking at you saying, after you say, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I cast out devils? Didn't I do many wondrous works? And he looks at you and says, depart from me. I never knew you, ye that work iniquity. One of those iniquities is unforgiveness. Be careful with that. Another iniquity is pride. Pride will make you judgmental. Pride will make you critical. Pride will make you arrogant. Pride will make you intolerant. Pride will make you narcissistic. Be careful about pride. That's one of those seven sins God hates. Hates. Be careful about that. Another one you be careful about. Don't be a sower of discord. You cause friendships to stop. You cause people to hate other people. Oh, my goodness. That's serious. That's big time with God. Oh, no. No, don't play that. Mm -mm. See, there are a whole lot of those little subtle things that we don't pay much attention to. We say little snide things and, 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 and add little shadows of doubt on people's lives and characters, slandering them, making them look bad, sleazy, not so cool in other people's eyes. And we cause other people to fall for passing judgment mm -hmm. that they never had, but we planted the seed and the seed is growing, baby. Oh, you will miss out on God for that kind of stuff. Big time. All right, I'm going to stop there. So I just want you to be aware. There are little subtleties like that. Little subtleties. And let me go with another one, rebellion. Some of you are so strong-willed, so hard-headed. Even when you know you're wrong, you're going to do it your way out anyway because that's the only way you're going to feel gratified. What does God say about rebellion? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Be careful of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop there. But God bless you. Be encouraged. Know that he is on his way to scoop us up out of here. I just want to caution you to make sure that you have covered every I and crossed every T so that you're ready when he comes and you're acceptable in his sight. Okay? It's not, it's not time to play church. It's time to be his people. We're the people of God called by his name, called out of dark and delivered from shame saints everyone because of the blood of Christ Jesus the son God bless you